this? Robbie, I have eyes. Dude, that's so freaking crazy. Please be alarmed in silence. The mysterious structure, which has I been hope Aunt May isn't some watching this because she's going to flip. Has suddenly appeared in the war-torn Republic. You try to stop it, but decimating a remote screwed up, the Robbie. Base it's okay. You can These say it. Doesn't matter who screwed up. Have been what matters is that we're times screwed. On every social media outlet with the hashtag Apocalypse Wow. We're in the end game now. Will I see you at the meeting? Yeah, maybe. Depends how bored I am. You're expecting to hear a witty one-liner. I get it. But I gotta say, I'm speechless. I find that hard to believe. I'm serious! You dropped a freaking mountain on the Hulk, and he waltzed away like it was nothing. I mean, if a mountain didn't kill him, what could? My ego? No, no. It couldn't stand carrying the weight of the entire world. Oh, oh, a billion elephants. A duck the size of a house. Or maybe two mountains. The third time is the charm. Maybe we could drop the moon on him. Perfect idea, Hunter. Rock hard just thinking about it. I said what I said. What else is there to lose at this point? Literally everything. Figuratively, also everything. The exciting thing is that you don't know. And you know how this ends? Ah-ah! Uh -uh. A Deadpool never reveals his secrets. After all that, we can add another L to the pile. An L? You know, a loss. A goose egg. A big fat zero. Gotta say, I don't know how you keep up the cheerleader attitude. Because there is no other choice, I need to keep moving onward. Mm, sounds too heroic to me. Try again. But it is the truth. I cannot stop now. The truth also sounds stupid. But you're going because of spite. That's relatable! You are more perceptive than you give on. They don't call me perceptive pool for nothing. Just take it sleazy, Hunter. The fight's not going anywhere. Transia, I don't know how we always end up back there. Did you read today's book? Of course, but you'll get nothing out of me until the meeting. Are you heading to the meeting? Yeah, I'll be there shortly. Heading to book club. Are you? Meet you there. I'll walk you. Good girl, Charlie. A few more missions like that, we just might be friends. I thought Logan might bail. But I told him we'd bring more snacks this time. I have him figured out. Why have I not heard of Crash Morgan? I know it's an older book, but this is exactly the kind of story I like. Yeah, my plan backfired. Thought choosing a weird book would drive people away. Why would you do that? More punch for the rest of us. Let's get this started. I am ready. All right, Logan, I need to know. Why did you choose this book? I'll tell you, just not yet. I want to hear what you thought of this book. It was written in the 1940s, so I expected some repugnant attitudes and phrases. But it surprised me. The writing was simple, yet the story was deeper than it had any right to be. What was your favorite part? 
It's in the chapter where Crash and the princess escape the Zorgots. The next morning, they see the sunrise and Mars rising beside it. When the princess asks what the future holds and Crash just stares at Mars as it eclipses the sun, it gave me chills. Is it just me, or do the stellar bodies represent their time together? Absolutely. The time they have together is fleeting. I think this is where Crash first realizes there's no future for the two of them. Anyway, I think the moment gets lost when the Zorgots deploy their Null Stalkers. I don't get why the robot dog didn't warn them. I thought it could talk. Not until number 19, the minefields of the Reticulates. It's a whole thing. Got it. So, what's the idea with Crash's promise? What about it? When Crash apprehends Glaxogorp, they have a tense conversation in the back of the flypod. Crash says there's a way the Zorgots can leave the moon with everything they want, but the princess must take the throne. Then Crash vows that no queen of royal blood shall ever rule Deimos. Glaxogorp agrees, but why? Crash breaks the vow in the next chapter. Glaxocorp agrees because all Zorgots know Crash never lies. Isn't that the point? Crash cares so deeply for the princess that even a vow can be broken. And how does that tie into the hydro gunfight at the top of the space scraper? Really? You don't see it? <laughs> I do. They're shapeshifters. Who? Crash and Glaxogorp. No. Yep. But then, when do they... The hydro gunfight. Crash gets hit in the helmet and goes down. And what happens whenever Crash is unconscious? The helmet changes color. Turns bronze like the suit. Right. Then Glaxogorp pulls up on the rocket sled and takes Crash and the princess into custody. That's when they make the switch. Crash and Glaxogorp change form. But where do they stash the princess? That rocket sled had a bunch of places to hide a princess. Ah, but the next time you see the sled, Glaxogorp passes it off to another Zorgot and orders it to be sterilized. Their plan required her to be in Crash's suit. The opaque helmet keeps her safe. So we get to the Dimos Council meeting. The princess refuses the throne and declares her love for Crash, who is the princess in Crash's suit. When they embrace, the false princess deactivates the Magna Manacles binding Crash. But Crash nabs the Star Scepter from the fake princess, activates the suit's zoom vest, and smashes through the monoculus. So, if that's the actual princess, she escapes. But who is the false princess? That's a shape-shifted Glaxogorp. Without the Star Scepter, Deimos can't crown their queen. Right. She never wanted it, and the Zorgots definitely don't want it. Glaxogorp, posing as the princess, can steer Deimos away from war. And when the fake Glaxogorp vows the Star Scepter shall be restored to the Princess, that's actually Crash. So Crash made two vows and broke neither of them. The cliffhanger with Glaxogorp chasing Crash's ship is actually Crash returning to the Princess so they can escape Deimos. You got it. They reveal the switcheroo at the beginning of Number 6, Attack of the Intergalactic Space Weasels. Clever. I like it more now. And that's where we'll call it for tonight. So, Logan, why did you pick this book? Because it's fun. I almost wish this book was a comic instead. I would have liked to see the monoculus. My book was the best of them. You have only been to two meetings. Yeah, but you know I'm right. You did not mention a book for next time. Yeah, with everything going on, I'm gonna put Book Club on a hiatus. Until things are less apocalyptic. Uh, 
I hope we come back to this in the future. Same here. Books are a gourmet meal for thought. Not to call anyone out, but you just can't feed your mind gristle. Well, who else would you invite, if you could? Hmm. There's a lawyer who got me out of a bad situation a few years back. Smart as a whip, picks up on subtle things even I tend to miss. As long as the books we read have braille copies, I could convince him. Actually, I need to thank you for sticking around since the beginning. For all your help with Carol. Of course. I don't get close to many people. I never get into relationships. That's not a rule I ever break. But I did with Carol. Beyond all the reasons, I find her amazing. Do you know why? You are into her because she can kick your ass. That's exactly it. Really? I was joking. I'm not. Vampires fight dirty. They'll kill whoever you love just because they can. If they really want you to suffer, they'll turn your true love into one of them. That's why dating me is a death sentence, and I refuse to put that weight on anyone. But can you imagine some pissant vampire trying to chow down on Captain Marvel? First his fangs would snap off on contact with her skin, then she'd just chuck it into space. No hiding from the sun out there. There's no way they can ever touch her, but it's not just that. It is you. She is safe from you. Yeah. I never break my rule because I know deep down there's a chance I could lose control. But with Carol, Hell, she could hold me over her head till I was myself again. Wouldn't even break a sweat. Well, completely unrelated, I want to watch Captain Marvel bench press Blade. I would not. You were no fun. And you already knew that. Well, I'm glad you joined me for all of this. Maybe next time the world is ending, I'll start a sparring club. A sparring club? Is that just training with a fancy name? You saw right through me. You headed out? That is it for me. Later then. That is something. Wanda, there's something I ought to say to you. Oh? You were... right about Lilith's tomb. 
Did you just say I was right about something? I did. Just as you were probably right about other things, too. Many other things. You let an old, stubborn immortal let you take the blame for so much. You were hurting. You needed something to point to. And here I was thinking I was the one who was supposed to take care of all of you. I am. Sorry, Wanda. For everything. So am I. I see you and Caretaker are on the mend. Seems so. I should be happy about it. But how can I be happy about anything when the Temple of Cathan is wreaking havoc on my home? I grew up in Transia, you know. In a remote village at the foot of Mount Wondercor. It's all destroyed now. Along with those poor people's lives. The casualties Transia has suffered these last few days. We will avenge each and every one of them. I really hope we can. It is not a matter of can, Wanda. We must. The world depends on it, literally. Whatever it takes to stop your mom, right? Whatever it takes. I'm afraid of her, you know. Of seeing her. I mean, what if it happens again? What if she turns me back into bad Wanda? What if I... <sighs> go dark? If it came to that, we would find a way of removing her corruption again. I appreciate that, but I don't think you're going to have time for all that while you're also trying to stop Cathan from tentacle climbing into this dimension. You're right. We probably would not have time to save you. You wouldn't? I'm joking. Oh, you almost got me there. No one is leaving you behind ever again. Promise? Cross my heart. Ah, well, I ought to get back to the news. See what new horrors are befalling my hometown. Do not watch too much of it. The overconsumption of news media is supposed to be bad for your mental health. Especially during an apocalypse. There are worse things for your mental health, Hunter. And I'm pretty sure I've experienced them all. I'll take my chances with a little cable news. Night. You have gone too far, Mother. I could say the same to you, child. Leaving me for dead and buried under that mountain. What a way to treat your mother. One look at Transia tells me everything I need to know. Sarah was right. My mother died centuries ago. It pains me to hear you say that. Especially when everything I have done has... Do not say it. Do not tell me you have unleashed all those horrors in my name. I do not need to. All will be revealed soon. The Darkhold is finally complete. The prophecy draws to its close. The Midnight Sun is coming. And with it, him. We will all have our final parts to play. Will you be ready when the curtain rises? It is not I who seems to be wrestling with their destiny. What are you not telling me, Mother? Such an inquisitive and perceptive child. You remind me of him, you know. I thought we could not talk about him here. Don't be ridiculous, not him. Him. Your father. The similarities are impossible to ignore. I have never heard of you speak of him until now. We close upon the end of a billion years prophecy. Forgive me if I am a bit... sentimental. I sometimes wonder if I could bring his soul to this place. To have him stand once more beside me. 
beside us. I implore you, do not. In his death, he has been spared the sight of the foul creature you have become. I envy him for that. What? No snappy comeback? Promises that we shall be reunited under the glorious eye of the Midnight Sun? No, child. Not this time. Agatha? I'm sorry to intrude, dear. Do you have a moment? For you? Of course. You always came to me for advice when vexed by a difficult problem. Never Sarah. Agatha, does something trouble you? Perhaps I can return the favor. And now you're the one reading my mind. You used to read my mind? It's an expression, my dear. Hmm. I choose to believe you. So, what do you need? I don't know how to say this without sounding melodramatic, but... Despite our actions, the prophecy unfolds. Cathan's return seems inevitable. Yet all I can do for the people I love is haunt a library and play macabre tour guide. Agatha... I should be here with Sarah and yourself, helping to bring the team together. But I never have felt more... useless. Uh, I'm sorry, Hunter. I'll leave you to your rest. Agatha, wait! Good night. Agatha... Hunter, I'm coming in. Where is she? I heard you speaking with her. I am surprised you can hear Agatha. Then you don't deny it? Why would I? Especially to you. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Why didn't you tell Caretaker? I made a promise not to tell. To who? Agatha. Then why now? Because if you can hear Agatha, the two of you need to have a long talk. <sighs> I don't know if I could face her. Then let me talk to her. <sighs> All right. I'm trusting you, Hunter. Good night. You know, when I first heard about Lilith and her apocalypse, I was skeptical that a resurrected half-demon warrior from the 17th century was going to be our best shot at beating her forces of darkness back. And now? Nico and company made the right call when they raised you from the dead, because I'm pretty sure you're the one who's going to save the day. You are fond of Nico and magic and the rest of the sons, are you not? I am. I think their talents and competence have been totally overlooked by Caretaker. They deserve their day in the sun. And I'm pretty sure with the way you've been leading them, they'll get it. To be honest, I feel more comfortable taking orders than giving them. I have always been a soldier. A weapon, if you will, for others to wield. We all have to start somewhere. When I enlisted, I was 90 pounds soaking wet. A light breeze would have knocked me over. Not what you call captain material. But I didn't give up. 
and I won't let you either. There is my ferocious Charlie girl. Oh, and I was just about to binge watch my stories. Now this is magic. Always a pleasure. What is it like to have a tan? Does it hurt? The entire abbey is humming about the Hulk. But I'm sure if Banner were here, he'd be lamenting the Hulk's appearance with us. Doctor, you do know that Banner, Banner is the Hulk? No, no, that's where you're wrong. Banner and the Hulk share a body, but they are different personalities. And, and I understand Banner isn't incredibly fond of his greener half. That conflict is tearing Banner apart. He must learn to make peace with himself. That is easier said than done. For men like Banner, the road to inner harmony is paved with bloodshed. It does not have to be. It does if you hate yourself. That is very dark. Doctor, are you feeling okay? Yes. I think someday I will be. MJ. Can you please drive by May's house and make sure she's okay? If she turned on the news, she's probably scared. I know you're upset too. Everyone's in the same boat. She won't want you to be making a fuss, so come up with an excuse as to why you're there. Maybe bring her some cookies. Oh, and she probably won't be going out to get her paper, so can you collect the Daily Bugles and bring them in? Maybe check to see if they're running any Spider-Man headlines and ditch those? I can't say when I'm coming back. Hopefully soon? Yes, I'm in a safe place with good people. You can tell that to May, too. MJ, I'm gonna be fine. Promise. Are you hearing this? It's adorable. What did I get myself into? Having a rough day? I've had my fair share of rough days, but I'm finally reaching my breaking point. So, what is the problem now? Eddie won't listen to me. I can speak with Eddie if you wish. No, no, that's all right. He'd feel like we were ganging up on him. Look, it's Eddie's vampire investigation. It feels like we're on one wild goose chase after another. I'm worried Eddie's about to jump into the deep end. Are you chasing vampire geese? I hear they are meaner than actual vampires. <laughs> I wish. I bet vampire geese are more majestic. Peter, no one is forcing you to help him. I know, it's just... Eddie always pushes me away. I thought if I could help him with something he cared about, maybe he'd... I don't know. I just don't want him to make a fool of himself, or get into trouble if he pokes around in places he shouldn't. What should I do here, Hunter? You have known Eddie longer than I have. I trust you to guide him in the right direction. Oh, wow. You really know how to ramp up the pressure, don't you? But you're right. I should figure out what I'm gonna tell him. No matter what you do, keep looking out for your friend. You got it, Hunter. Hunter, hello. Agatha, a moment? Yes, Hunter? 
And why are we whispering? Meet me in my room. We need to talk. All right. What is this about? Wanda knows you are in the Abbey. Last night, she overheard us speaking. She did? She confronted me and demanded to know where you were. What did you tell her? I could not lie to her. Not about this. I'm glad you didn't. If Wanda overheard me, the rules have changed. Should we tell her? Yes, this evening. I'll seek you out after the mission. Here I go, stirring up trouble. Feels like old times. You... This is the first time I've been here since... Well, since I had to leave the Abbey. And? For obvious reasons, Agatha is on my mind. I can't imagine how much pressure it would be to carry that kind of secret. Of course, I'd like to know more, but I trust you're doing the best you can. I have nothing to add, but soon, I promise. That's all I ask. I don't know what I expected to find here. Books, usually. Thank you for that. I meant... Agatha and I spent so much time here, I expected to feel... I don't know... anything at all? Instead, I'm just... numb. I'm starting to feel guilty that I don't feel guilty. If you want to talk about it, I will listen. Thank you, but I don't want to distract from what I'm sure will be a busy day for you. It is no trouble. I know. But also, I need to figure it out for myself before I can talk about it. If the offer's still open later, I'll take you up on it. I understand. Well, I should get back to my studies. I apologize for not having the bandwidth to speak last night. It's just... I'm still in a bit of shock. My mind has been spinning trying to process it all. You do not need to apologize to me, or anyone else. Yes, yes, I know you're right. There's no excuse. I must pull myself together. At any moment, my sister will unleash Cathan upon the planet. Yet Wanda is back in the library reading as if we were back to normal before... Agatha passed. Half of me wishes she was here so I could ask her for guidance. For a way out of this mess. And the other half? Is glad she's not alive to endure the horrors of what a Cathan reign would bring. Still, I wonder what she would say if she was here. I know one thing she would have wanted. What's that? To see this rift between you and Wanda finally healed. Ah, uh, I know. But I'm not quite ready for that. Not yet. Just do not wait until the world is over to do it. It may never happen then. Not in this life. Ah, uh, I need to get my head together. Now that the Temple of Cathan is revealed, our options are dwindling. Hunter, Wanda is at my shrine, calling out for me. I think she deserves an answer, don't you? Then we should speak with her. I'll meet you at my shrine. My tongue and I are taste buds. Huh? <laughs> You hear me, Fury? Barely. The damn temple seems to be screwing with everything over here. 
Is there any way we can move the civilians out of the area quicker? We're doing our best. We nearly lost a couple troop carriers flying personnel in over the mountains. And Latveria's closed its borders. That's not helping. Come on, Fury. Transia's population is, what, 20,000? Shield should be able to handle that in a day. 20,000? Try a couple hundred million. This isn't about just one country anymore. We've got to evacuate all of Eastern Europe. I could take a Quinjet and be there in a few hours, Fury. Just give the word. The word is, stay out of it, Cap. Focus on the big picture from there. We've got it handled here. Not well from the sound. Hunter, you promised me the truth about Agatha. I should let her tell it. Agatha is here? Right now? I'm right here, Wanda. Can you not see me? Agatha? Where are you? Just my voice, then. Better than nothing. Agatha, I... Oh, there's so much I have to say to you. Wanda, please. You are my pupil. I shall not have you bear the burden of my death. I lost control. No, I did. I pushed you too far, too fast. Yes, but I have to... My dear, this isn't the first time you visited my grave. I heard all you confessed. There is no need to repeat it. And there is very little time. Cathan grows restless in his slumber. I can aid you in this fight, but I'll need your help, both of you. My connection to this world is tenuous. There is a ritual that can bind me to this place. First, I'll need you to retrieve a... memento. What exactly do you want us to bring you? Sarah's grief is my strongest tie to the world. This memento symbolizes our tie to one another. What is it? I don't know, but it's somewhere in her room. The closer I get, the more painful it is. A ghost can feel pain? I'm not thrilled about it. I am unfamiliar with any ritual you describe. It was in one of the books I wouldn't allow you to read. I read many of those books. Yes, you were a... precocious child. Those books were decoys. I knew it. I'm sure you did. How should we go about this? Hunter, you know Sarah better than most. I'm relying on you to search her room and find this memento. Whatever it is. And what should I do? Observation and distraction. So I'm the lookout while the hunter pokes around caretaker's room? I do it myself, but... Oh, it's no problem. One of my favorite shows involves a weekly heist. Now, both of you promise me Sarah cannot know about the ritual. Not until it's done. Why not? The more she knows, the less chance we have to pull it off. I have kept your secret this long. And I can keep it as well. Good. I believe in you both. You can count on us. Wanda, she already left. Oh. Well, time to sneak into Caretaker's room and steal one of her heirlooms. Let's go before I talk myself out of it. You and me both. Right behind you. Hunter, I'm outside the door. As soon as you find it, I'll give you the all clear. Wanda? Uh, 
Hi, Nico. What are you doing outside caretaker's room? Nothing. And I'm not outside her room. You're leaning against the door. Oh, I guess I am. But I'm waiting on the hunter. Oh, for what? Uh, Nico, do you mind if I wait alone? Oh, right, right. Good luck. All right, she's gone. Hurry up. This is harder than it looks on television. How's it going in there? Found it. All right. Wanda? The coast is caretaker. Hi. How are you, uh, doing? I'm tired. It's been a long day. Oh, I know the feeling. We should, um, take a walk around the Abbey. Why would we do that? It's good to, you know, get the blood flowing after a long day. So how about we... Wanda, it's late. I'm going to bed. I want to talk to you about Agatha. You do? I... Can we take that walk? It's about something she said to me about you. Wanda, this topic is out of bounds. I'm not asking to be forgiven. I know I'll never make it right. But I have a wonderful memory of Agatha speaking fondly of you. It's not fair to keep it from you. So, can we take that walk, please? <sighs> All right. A short walk. A short walk. You'll be back in uh, a few minutes, at most. <clears throat> Let's go. I'd like to get this over with. That's <clears throat> perfectly clear. Are you all right? Just a small cough. <clears throat> Why don't we head through the yard? Hunter. Ileana? What were you doing in caretaker's room? Agatha is a ghost. She asked Wanda and I to recover a locket. We need it for a ritual to restore Agatha. Then she can help us all fight Lilith. That is absolutely amazing. Tell no one. Let me join the ritual. Okay, I will. Then I saw nothing. Bring out. Mm -hmm. Good. You know where to meet me. I never want to do that again. Digging through her things... That did not feel good. If the ritual works, Caretaker may be able to hear Agatha again. How does that feel? Better. For me, too. So what next? I'll take the... what was it? A locket. Hmm. I assume Agatha will tell us how it fits into the ritual. And that I shall. Agatha, we have Caretaker's memento. I know. I can feel it. Would you be a most faithful apprentice and place a ward upon it? Of course. That's better. Now, do you recall the binding ritual in the Libris Illicitus? The Grey Seneschal? But that's... Forbidden, yes. I was going to say extremely dangerous. And I would never suggest it unless the circumstances were this dire. What is this ritual exactly? The Grey Seneschal requires an item that binds a spirit to a person or place. Why is it so dangerous? Because the first step of the ritual is to destroy that item. And for a short time, the spirit is extremely vulnerable to dissolution, to possession, to destruction. I am not entirely comfortable with this, but if you are taking the risk, I will support you. I am so proud to know the person you've become, Hunter. Trust me when I say the risk is worth it. Should the ritual work as expected, everyone in the Abbey will be able to hear me, to see me. I'll be able to help when it's most needed. We do this when the moon is right. 
But it all falls apart if Sarah learns what we're planning. Why? This ritual is one of hers. She made it centuries ago. She knows how great the risks and how slim the odds. And there's no chance in hell she'll allow Wanda to lead the ritual. Yet for us to succeed, Wanda, it must be. No, I can't do this. Wanda, this ritual's power lies in its inherent contradictions. And what greater contradiction can there be than for me to restore your spirit to life? But Agatha, if I lose control... You won't. How do you know? Because you're my best apprentice. Because you learn from your mistakes. And because I want you to know I truly forgive you. For that to happen, you'll need to see it in my eyes. <sighs> All right. Now to prepare. Wanda, I'll be in your room. We'll go over every step of the ritual. I'll meet you there. She already... I know. Hunter, do you believe I can do this? Yes. I have no doubt. Why? Because you are the only person who ever resisted my mother's control as one of her fallen. It wasn't enough. It was just enough. That is why you are here. <sighs> okay. When the moon is right. When the moon is right. No pressure. <laughs>